Sit back for a moment and imagine yourself watching the docking maneuver to the lunar gateway outside the window of your space shuttle. In a moment, you'll transfer to the space station from where you'll land on the moon the next day, along with three other humans. Sound like science fiction to you? It could be reality in as little as 10 years, if not for this outrageous discovery on the moon that throws a wrench in NASA's plans. Lunar Reconnaissance Mission For a long time, it was quiet around the moon. Then NASA once again sent a probe to the Earth's satellite in June 2009. The goal of the Lunar Reconnaissance Mission was clearly to prepare for colonization of the moon. In addition to a detailed mapping of the surface, the orbiter searched for the best landing and settlement sites, resources, and water. In the not-so-distant future, the first living and working modules are to be built on the moon, enabling scientists and astronauts to spend long periods of time there. After telescope observations showed that there are natural water resources in craters and regions that are permanently turned away from the sun, Interest in further lunar research increased enormously. With cameras, spectrometers, neutron detectors, and radar, the probe set to work creating the most detailed lunar map we have ever possessed. The new map went far beyond simply depicting the lunar surface. For the first time, the instruments penetrated deep into the rock structures to learn more about composition, thermal emanations, and the consequences of geoactivities. The 3D view with measurement data that reached several meters below the surface, a unique topography, and completely new images of the Earth's satellite emerged. Next, the orbiter took on the lunar poles. In craters that are never illuminated by the sun, permanent deposits of water ice were suspected. And this assumption was fortunately confirmed. If there is water on the moon, the implementation of a station permanently inhabited by humans is already much easier than without. The water would be treated on site as drinking water, serving for everyday use, for the operation of greenhouses, and even fuel can be produced from pure water. Back to the moon with Artemis. For a long time, the only person talking about flying humans to the moon again was SpaceX founder Elon Musk. Yet plans for a mission that would permanently colonize the moon had long lain in NASA's drawers. Artemis, named after the Greek goddess of the moon and hunting, was long considered too ambitious or unfeasible by NASA insiders until the competition appeared on the screen. NASA quickly dug up the plans again and announced its own lunar program a few months before the official launch of SpaceX's first lunar rocket. The settlement of the moon should eventually benefit all space pioneers. In the long term, base camps on the moon and a lunar space station will serve as a starting point or stopover for space travel to more remote destinations such as Mars. Even before NASA or SpaceX send humans to Mars, survival conditions in space can be optimally tested on the comparatively close moon. This will make future Mars missions easier and safer. No one yet knows how people will fare living for several months or years on another celestial body and relying on local resources to sustain themselves. In addition to housing modules, laboratories, and power plants, extraterrestrial crop cultivation and mining are being tested under real conditions on the moon. If problems arise, astronauts and scientists can be rescued within three to four days. On Mars, the situation is different. Depending on the location of the planet, spacecraft need six to nine months to reach the red planet. Is NASA hiding something? NASA was the first to step on the gas pedal, and unfortunately the mission failed because of the development of new lunar rockets. Artemis launches and launch dates were postponed so often that almost nobody took the project seriously anymore. There was even a rumor that NASA had rashly inflated the Artemis mission to counter the private lunar pioneers, SpaceX and Blue Origin, and was now backing out. In July 2021, the first rocket of the Artemis 1 mission was to be launched and bring with it a still unmanned space capsule into space. After an initial cancellation, the test flight was postponed to August, then to September, and finally Artemis 1 was canceled completely. The official reason was a fuel leak, 
the fault of which could not be detected and repaired. In expert circles, this explanation was received as questionable, and again one suspected that behind held hand, NASA had actually completely different problems. The launch was postponed to an unknown time, allegedly in favor of a comprehensive technical revision of the program. How dangerous are the moonquakes really? While NASA was working on the Artemis rockets and space capsules, shocking observations were occurring on the moon. Seismographs recorded lunar tremors and the LRO orbiter discovered strange fissures appearing on the lunar surface around the same time. Scientists have known about the phenomenon of moonquakes for quite a while, and the fact that the moon is shrinking is no secret among experts either. Despite many successful probes and the successes of the Apollo missions that took place from the late 1960s to the early 1980s, we know very little about the actual topography and geological features of the moon. For a long time, the Earth's satellite was considered a dead and dusty piece of rock, but the moon now shows a very different face. The geological activities are far more extensive and complex than scientists previously thought. Observations indicate that the moon has an active core whose activities are responsible for the quakes and other geological features. If the moon has an active core, the new theory that the moon was not formed by a collision with the Earth may be true. Rather, this celestial body seems to be a small planet which was caught by the magnetic field of the Earth. The shrinking moon and the quakes are the result of the slowly cooling core. Due to the processes inside, the moon contracts and cracks and wrinkles form on the surface. These cracks, known as lunar folds or grooves, may be only a few hundred meters long, or they may appear as fissures and canyons in the lunar rocks that are miles long and deep. One of the best known regions where these lunar folds occur is the moonquake center near the lunar equator. Does it mean the end of the NASA mission? What exactly these processes will mean in the future, no one can accurately predict at this time. However, it's unlikely that NASA will withdraw from the Artemis mission because of this. Unpredictable moonquakes and fissures opening up in the lunar soil do pose a danger to settlements and technical facilities. Nevertheless, the changes are so mild that there is currently no talk of increased danger to humans on the moon. Strictly speaking, the moon has shrunk only a few millimeters as a result of activity over the past 10 million years. Accurate observations of tectonic activity and the shrinking moon will be the focus of scientific investigations at the site. Another focus of the Artemis mission will be the exploration of available raw materials. Researchers will use on-site drilling to find out where the moon really comes from. If we understand the geological development of the Moon and other bodies in the solar system, our understanding of the entire history and dynamic processes in our solar system will also grow. The Lunar Gateway Space Station Even before the first permanent facilities are built on the Moon, NASA will establish a space station. Several miles above the lunar surface, the Lunar Gateway will serve as a transfer station and research facility. The station's modules are already being developed and built as international cooperative projects. In addition to NASA, scientists and engineers from ESA and other international partners are involved in the projects. The space station is to be designed broadly like a gigantic and mobile spacecraft. Initially, only a few necessary modules will be put into space, and over the years, the Lunar Gateway can grow and be constantly adapted by adding many more modules. Initially, there will be only a life support unit, a propulsion unit, a communication unit, a science unit, and other functional modules. But later on, living modules, lounges, and other amenities may be added. Who knows, Elon Musk may even add his planned lunar hotel directly to the Artemis station. Over the course of decades, a complete space city could be built in orbit around the moon. Nevertheless, the Lunar Gateway is intended to serve merely as a passageway for surface stays on the Moon and travel to Mars. Humans will reach the surface with the Human Landing System, HLS. In addition to astronauts and scientists, 
The Artemis Project also envisions flights and lunar visits by ordinary people who come to the moon as settlers or visitors. For the vehicles, NASA is relying entirely on its successes with the Mars rover's reconnaissance and perseverance. The lunar explorers are already under construction and will resemble the Mars models, except that they are significantly larger and thus offer sufficient space for human drivers. The first successful Orion flight. It became clear in November 2022 that NASA was serious. At last, the technically completely overhauled rocket brought the first unmanned space capsule to the moon. The Orion capsule took another whole week to reach the moon, flew quite close to its surface, and then turned around. Orion 1 landed safely on Earth in mid-December. The test flight to the moon and the starting signal for the return of humans to the moon was a complete success. Now, millions of people worldwide are eagerly awaiting the first manned launch. Orion 2 will be another test run, but as early as 2024, four NASA astronauts will finally fly to the moon. Until the construction of the moon base camp can start, it will probably take another 10 years. The first lunar settlers will face breathtaking adventures and challenges. The construction of the station and the exploration of the moon are ambitious projects that represent another milestone on man's path into space. Thanks to the latest technologies, we no longer have to sit up late at night watching TV as our parents and grandparents did in the 1960s and 1970s when the first Apollo mission conquered the moon. Via recordings, round-the-clock cameras and live streams, we will all be able to participate equally and comfortably in humanity's new space adventure. We're already looking forward to it, but how are you feeling about it? Are you already excited and can't wait? Or do you find the moon rather boring?